What's up, Doomers? Happy Friday. So this is the second video of my shell scripting series. Not that it's in any particular order, but this is just the second one that I'm doing. So today, I'm going to show you how to make an executable shell script. So here we have this script called test.sh. All it does, I'll explain, is takes an argument, prints it, or echoes it, and takes a second argument and echoes it. Not anything too crazy, but I just want to make it simple just to show you what an argument is. Um, but before I show you, I should just show you, before, sorry, before I show you how it's used in the command prompt, <laughs> sorry, the, the shell, uh, this is how you call it within, within, a, within a script. $1, one dollar two. So $1 $1 and dollar two are going to be replaced by those set arguments. So let's go back. So if I run bash test.sh, um, I'm not going to give it any arguments right now. So those placeholders, dollar one and dollar two, are just blank. Now I could, in theory, give it give it arguments, though this is not good practice for a variety of reasons. Where if you already if you're already familiar with the shell, you know why this is bad. Uh, it's mainly bad because you can't tell if it's an argument for this or for that. But anyways, we'll do foo and bar classic. So there we go. This is the first argument. It is the second argument. I put that in quotes because that's not how it's supposed to be. How you're supposed to do it is make test.sh executable. So what do I mean by that? So usually when you run a binary, you do dot, as in the directory, the current directory, slash program name. Now, if you compile a C program, by default, it's just going to be A dot out. And if you do, you run A dot out it'll just run the executable. But in this case, we don't want any of that. We don't have an executable, but we do have a shell script that we want to be interpreted as an executable file. I don't know if that made sense. But anyways, here we go. So to do that, to make test.sh into an executable file, we want to use a command called chmod. Sorry, mod. I actually put mode because I think it stands for change mode bits. In fact, let's see it. Man, ch mod. Change file mode bits. Exactly. So we're going to use this command called ch mod. We're going to go plus x and then the name of the file that we want to be created into an executable. So there we go. So now we can run dot slash test dot sh and then well, we'll just run that right now. And as you can see, no arguments, no output. So we run test dot sh foo bar. There we go. Foo and bar. Cool. Now, you probably have not seen programs that you use that end in .sh, even if some of those are indeed shell scripts. So what you can do is use the move command to change the name of the file. So if I go mv 
test.sh test and then test, just test. We can do the same thing that we did before, but now it's test. Works exactly the same. But if we go back into Vim test, you see that the syntax highlighting went away. Now that's because Vim doesn't see the file extension anymore. It doesn't see .sh, so it doesn't know that it's a shell script anymore. Now what you can do, I'm obviously going to show you how to, how to fix that. And I should add, it's not just Vim, it's a bunch of other editors that aren't smart enough to tell. I mean, honestly, this could be anything right here. So that's part of the problem of just giving it a name is that it doesn't know what kind of, like this could be a pearl or something like that. It has no idea of, of knowing unless you have some bloated IDE that compares it to, you know, a billion different languages and then tries to guess what it is. But what you're supposed to do is type in pound, oh, pound, exclamation point, slash bin, slash sh. Now, I'm assuming that you just want this to run as a standard shell script. You could do bash for bash specific commands or syntaxes. But I'm just going to assume you're trying to use the post 6 compliant shell. So we're just going to use sh. Now if you go back into Vim, Vim can recognize, ah yes, this executable is indeed in shell. Oop, I just knocked over my headphones, but indeed this script is a shell script. And I'm going to use the appropriate syntax highlighting. So that's just a small thing. It w like I said, it works the same way. Foo bar. So by the end of this, you should know how to, one, make a shell script executable. Two, how to use arguments in a shell script. Uh, three, which is auxiliary to the other two, which is how to change a file name. And also auxiliary to those other two is how to enable or rather enforce shell scripting syntax highlighting. But more generally it's to tell the interpreter what exactly it is that it's running because even though it ran without us having to tell the shell that it was indeed a shell script we there's some problems with that if you know if you know if you're more familiar with how the system works there's it's it's more like it's guessing so we shouldn't do that but so this is the end of the video. Um, that's basically it. Just on some side notes. One, uh, as requested, or rather as, as pointed out by one of my subscribers, I fixed the aspect ratio, which I achieved easily by just unplugging the other monitor. Not a great solution, but honestly, I'm too lazy to use FFmpeg to crop out the other side whatever um, second oh yeah second yeah right now it's 432 in the morning I was trying to avoid all the normies that are here late as late as 1 a.m. but I don't know if you heard last time but there was a bunch of profanity being shouted out I think my headphones are pretty good about that even though these ones that I have aren't as good as the ones that I have back at home, the Turtle Beaches. But anyways, yeah, they were they were cursing a lot and I was afraid it's going to be in the video. Not that I mind cursing personally, but it's just not good. 
for these kinds of videos but yeah anyways you'll probably hear that in the future so stay tuned for that um, I was just a little mo more motivated than usual to come out here early in the morning and record this so if I sound a little tired that's why and you might be like well no it's not 4.30 in the morning look it's in Hora it says 9.33 and I don't know what's wrong maybe you have a solution but yeah I think it has to do with the fact that I'm using a hard drive it doesn't know exactly it doesn't save my state I don't know something like that but yeah I tried I tried I tried resetting the clock like the way you do it when you install arch but that didn't work either so who knows anyways have a good rest of your Friday doomers and uh I might wake you up early Saturday morning for another video. Maybe not. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, until next time.